case you don't know, I am not Richard Dixon. And I'm not, and I'm not Shauna Swanberg. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the grassroots of PR. And in this program today, we are going to talk about flyers, newsletters, and emails. How many here are already producing flyers for their club? How about newsletters and emails? Great, so we have a good cross section. We're gonna cover a little bit of each one. We're gonna go more in depth on flyers because from flyers we can create newsletters and emails. Mr. Dixon. While you are signing in, on the very back of it, there's another sign in. We will give you the how-to portion of this PowerPoint presentation and email it to you if you so desire. In regards to notes, this is the handout that we'll give to you at the end of class. Everything that we're going to be talking to you about will be on this handout. Don't worry if you're not catching it all. Let's start with the number one thing. The number one thing is flyers. So, in flyers, what is the most important thing about a flyer? When do we use them? We want to use them for open houses, workshops, contests, and we can even use a flyer format for making an agenda. Flyers. This Oops. is going to be the basis for everything that we do here today. Flyers. They can't be just a little attractive. They have to be a lot attractive. Did you get a flyer about this? program today? Yes. Did you get a flyer about a contest recently? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you get a flyer about a special event recently? A, a guest speaker at a club recently? Yes. How many got a flyer recently? Oh, yeah. How many got another flyer recently? <laughs> How many got another flyer yeah. recently? Yeah. Yeah. Which ones catch your attention? The ones that are boring no. or the ones that are attractive. Okay. They can't be a little attractive. They have to be a lot attractive. So we're going to talk today about how to make an attractive flyer. Okay. Here are some samples of some of our favorite flyers. How many of you received some of these? Have you seen these before? Raise your hand or as they lot. show up. <laughs> the reason why it was the first one. Notice what you like about these as you view them. Why they work. Why are your, where is your eye attracted to? Why is it attracted to it? We're going to tell you why, even if you don't already know. There are reasons these flyers stand out. I like that guy. I know that guy. Was that Sean or Richard? <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> this question. This slide. All right, we're going to work with this flyer. How many have seen this flyer before? Have you seen this? Just Glenn. It's Let good. me first ask, how many know what Parley Pro is? Because if we're going to be looking at this quite a bit, so we're going to talk about this flyer. Parley Pro is Parliamentarian Procedure. We're not going to talk about that in this workshop today. <laughs> <laughs> but Gerard gave a workshop on Parliamentary Procedure for one of his manual requirements. And this was his promotional flyer. It was designed by Richard Dixon. So we're going to take it apart here today. And we're going to talk about what works about it and how to build it. The first thing that happens with this flyer is that it has a big, bold headline and it's reversed out of its background. Does everybody understand what I mean by reversed? Mm -hmm. no. It's on a dark background with a light headline. In this case, it's a white typeface against a dark background. Now, I don't like that because it's hard for me to read. 
And most people will say it is the exact opposite. So we just know that you're backward a little bit. <laughs> there are other things about this flyer that I bet you do like and do pop out at you, and so the flyer still works for you. And it's important that we are sensitized to black and white material. That's what we receive most all the time, and it's what we're used to. So when you reverse it, it's more attractive. It also stands out because it's the opposite of what you expect. Mm -hmm. The second thing that makes this flyer stand out is the photograph is off-center, tilted, and surrounded by a reversed background. Now this is a very flat photo, as you will see in a slide beyond this. When we start to rebuild this flyer, you'll see that this is just an ordinary photograph. But by turning it, framing it, we've made it stand out. It's not ordinary on this page. We're going to talk a little bit about photographs. Some of our photographs that we get are full face on, like the one we just saw. Some are a profile. This is a profile. Where is he facing? into the flyer. Yeah. If we put this photograph on this side of the flyer, where is our eye going to go? Off the flyer. Right off the material. So yeah. when you are working with someone's photograph and it has an angle to it, work with the angle. We want to keep the eye going in toward the material that is promoting our message. Mm -hmm. Farshad, in this one we have even his hand, if we put that picture pretty much anywhere else, where are we going to be looking? Mm -hmm. Right off the page. He's literally beckoning us mm -hmm. to read what we put right below his hand. This is almost a full face shot, but we have an angle here that gives us some direction. So we want to make sure we're using this direction to get our attention. We can put this photograph pretty much anywhere on the page, but if we put it here, our eye naturally will go to the right because we put a little shadow mm -hmm. on that side of the photograph. Draws our eye back over mm -hmm. and the message, happiness rocks, is the next thing we see. Back to Parley Pro. Back to this really great looking guy, Gerard. <laughs> great photograph, but if we don't make it stand out, we will lose him. We've also put spot color onto this flyer to highlight the message and also to give more visual appeal to the material on the page. Spot color is exactly that. Use too much color and it doesn't stand out. Use too little color and it won't stand out. Use a balance of spot color and you have visual appeal. It's separated so it keeps your eye moving down the page and it allows our minds to take in what's in between those two lines of spot <coughs> color. White space. We've talked a lot about white space in graphic design. I'm sure everybody has heard the term white space. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. yes. They've heard okay. that frame. In this case, we have black space <laughs> because we've reversed the flyer. We've reversed its colors. So what would be white is now black. So in this case, what we're talking about is white space that is actually black space. It's blank space. Blank space relieves our eyes. When we're scanning a page, our eyes have a lot to do. If we have too much to do, we get confused. We stop looking at it all. We need places where our eyes can rest. White space, in this case black space, gives our eye a chance to rest and it also allows us to keep moving down the page. In American English, 
We read from left to right, top to bottom. We need to keep going, left to right, top to bottom. White space gives us our opportunity to keep moving down the page without getting overwhelmingly fatigued. We also have with this flyer uneven division. When we take a page that's eight and a half by 11, we fold it into thirds, we have even spaces, right? Okay. But when we do this, our eye doesn't know which section to start with first. When we have uneven division, we give our eyes the opportunity to find one thing first, then another, and then another. On this, we won't find it. We don't like things that are too linear on a flyer design. Our eyes don't like to look at it, and it doesn't register as any one important part on the page. So when we divide something unevenly, like we've done here, we have a smaller space at the top, a larger space in the middle. Where is the most important part of this information? In the middle. The least important is actually where it is and what time. You need to see this once. You need to understand what's in this mm -hmm. seminar to make you want to go to it. Does this part make you want to go to it? No. Does this part make you want to go to it? No. This is the part that makes you want to go to it. It tells you what you need to know. The most important part of the flyer should be in the largest part of the uneven division. So when you're folding something, uh, when you're working with something that's in half, you have the same problem. Which half is more important? Mm -hmm. Instead of folding in half, go a third and two thirds. Give your title up here, your most important information. No matter how you divide an eight and a half by 11 sheet, don't divide it in even spaces. Mm -hmm. And your eye will have more opportunity to take in the information. One of my favorite books in graphic design, it's an older book, it's now in its second edition. I started working with it in the 1980s. Everything about it is still relevant today. It's called The Elements of Graphic Design. It's by Alex White. It is going to be on your handout. You don't have to write this down. And you can find this on Amazon. It's very easy to get.